Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles. We are here in the bowels of Manhattan Reptile World. So this is a part of Manhattan Reptile World where people don't see because, uh, ah, it's run away. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold that thought. Part of our stars are running away today. Uh, so <laughs> today's video, bad, is all about tortoises and just some of the tortoises we currently have here at the shop. Uh, we're going to play a little <laughs> Why are you running? Don't make me run. You're not very fast. So we're going to start with the one that's trying to escape. And I am not a tortoise expert, but I brought one with me. So what I'm going to do is share a little bit of pieces and things I know. And not that one. He ain't trying to escape. I want that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to share a little bit of pieces I know. Then I'll let the guy who knows way more. Here, I'll take that little thing. Yeah, that's my money shot. Can't get rid of the money shot. So what this is is a Hermanus tortoise, correct? Yes. So tell me all about this Hermanus tortoise. So Hermanus tortoise, when talking in the pet trade, they, they're actually a really great one because they don't get very big. Um, at most, this guy's going to get probably two more inches longer and just a little bit bulkier. Um, they're one of the few tortoises that you can keep in those uh, wooden tortoise uh, keepers. Um, so they don't get very big. They're a desert grassland species, so they're eating a lot of different hays, a, um, a lot of veggies, not a lot of fruits or vegetables. Um, they actually really like the Missouri uh, pellet diet, as well as we get the um, pellet Tiffany hay. And you just moist it down, they like it a lot. Um, they look a lot like sulcatas, um, just a little bit darker. I think they're a little prettier. Um, so if you wanted like a, a smaller sulcata, this is a really great option. Um, they're also just like sulcatas, like to dig a lot. So if you have something outside, you know, make sure you dig down so they can't just dig under the fence. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty good medium sized tortoise. Well, this is going to take us to this little tortoise here. So this is what you'll see in pet shops all over the nation, including ours right here. And this is a baby sulcata. Now, before we get really in deep into sulcatas, I want to share a little bit more with you guys. You know, run over the other one. Uh, these are found pretty common and people buy these because they're little and they're cute and they're teeny and they're tiny. And everybody just thinks they're the most wonderful thing. They come and go, oh, look how cute it is. Hey, you cute little baby tortoise. But here we go. A little size comparison. So what that is, is a baby tortoise riding on what I would not even say is a full-grown sulcata. This sulcata here can get bigger. Let me spin you around, buddy. Whoa, for the camera. So he is pretty good sized, but he ain't done growing yet. There is more to him. <laughs> Don't fall, you dork. There is more to him than what you're seeing currently. Uh, these guys will run around eat all kinds of stuff. They need high UVB. They are a deserty species, but they will dig down to find humidity. You'll hear them called African spur thighs. And what that's referring to is right in here. See all that? I thought he was gonna trip again. I'm just gonna hand him to you. He's gonna be <laughs> foolish. So right here along their thighs is what they'll use to dig. And they'll dig and dig and dig and get down and make their own burrow. They kind of create their own little ecosystem wherever they go. And they are nature's tank. I mean, this thing's pretty much almost bulletproof. Don't shoot it. It's not really bulletproof. But uh, as far as like at this size, they're pretty sturdy, pretty massive animals. You see how balanced he is. And this is going to protect him from almost anything. So anything else you want to add about these big old sulcatas? Probably one of my favorite facts I've read about these guys is they've actually been known to share burrows with foxes and things that are found in Africa where they're found. Because they are so just tanky and stuff like that, a lot of the native predators when they're full grown just realize that there's not a lot of meat and a lot of that'd be a waste of energy to try and break through that so they've actually shared burrows with like different foxes and things like that now this isn't even the largest tortoise species in the world this is third correct third um technically second which we can get into when we talk about the next species mm. but these guys are technically the second largest second largest so that's me as we combine the other two somewhere yes yes oh that's interesting i yes. wasn't aware of that i always said they were third yep. and of course because we're on camera <laughs> and things never work as they're supposed to with tortoises the one i want to show next has managed to move some crap and oh, has yeah, disappeared i want to save him for last we're saving the rescue for last this will be the most expensive tortoise we have in the shop uh, they're really rare to see. You will not go into the majority of pet shops and find this guy here. <laughs> Come here, buddy. And honestly, it's probably one of the more expensive tortoises that anyone can really get. Yes. I don't think they get much pricier than this. And you're going to say, well, why? It doesn't look too impressive. But what this is, huh, I'm holding, I don't know how much you weigh. They get more valuable with weight. But I'm holding quite a bit of value in my hand right here. This is what's called an Aldabra. And they are pretty close related to Galapagos, correct? Mm -hmm. So this would be the largest species of tortoise. 
Yes, so the Galapagos and the Aldabra, on average, only um, are about 10 pounds difference. Right, with the Galapagos being a, bigger, being a little bit bigger. But because the actual current biggest is an Aldabra's, they're, we just call them tied for the biggest tortoises and make the Sulcata the second largest. Well, see, in sports, if you have a tie for first, this guy still only gets third. <laughs> I mean, yes. Don't I don't over. disagree don't with you, um, but for whatever reason, they have deemed them just the... Okay. Second. And I know they're very close related as far as like species go. So I didn't know if maybe they got lumped together and been separated into just a species and a subspecies or not, or if they were still completely separate. Um, they are still separate as far okay. as, as what I've been up to date read on. And that's what I, I kind of thought, because Galapagos, they are on their own island. Mm -hmm. So they've kind of had their own little ecosystem to, to evolve and become their own little separate thing. But this thing will get way bigger than this, correct? Yes. So how much weight can this get to? Easily 450 pounds. So that's a massive animal. That is a big animal. I mean, you're talking uh, the weight of a steer, right? Yeah. So it's like the weight of a steer in tortoise form. So they're not a very <laughs> appropriate animal for most people's houses. They just, they just really aren't. Uh, but they're really cool. We're really happy to have one. And I don't know what we're going to do when he's 450 pounds. I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah. The nice thing about them, unlike the sulcatos, so we have a spot for our sulcatos, but they'll be fine for their entirety. They don't get quite as big as these guys. And these are not super easy to move as adults, correct? No. There's a ton of them. As a matter of fact, where you used to work has a whole bunch of rescues, right? Yeah, we probably, well, they probably currently have, uh, last I left, I think there was probably 20 or so tortoises. <laughs> He's going to run that over. Yeah, uh, 20 or so sulcatas, and then they had nine aldabras. Okay. So they even have some aldabras. Yeah. That are rescues. But there's a bigger market for these. There's less of these out there than there are of these. So these yeah. are, you better have a plan to keep that forever, and you should for this too. But if you ever did want to part with that, it's going to be much easier to do so than it is yeah. that behemoth. Well, let's show one more tortoise. Now, yeah. this tortoise was a rescue tortoise. Before we go grab it, I want you to understand when you see it. It is not one that we produced here. We took it in because it needed some care. And it's going to look a little bit odd. And you have a theory as to why. So I'll let you explain that. It is another sulcata tortoise. So if you look at this guy's shell, you can already automatically see that his shell is deformed. Um, it, it looks kind of like those turtles you see online where it's got like a plastic wrapped around it. But that would not be the case here. Because if you look at this little tortoise here, he's got... 13 of these bumps whereas this one only has 11. The two it's missing are the two that would be right there which would cause this to fill out more. So what I'm thinking is this one was probably an incubation temperature situation. So I don't know if maybe uh, they just had a power outage or power surge. Sometimes putting them too warm or too cold can do that. Yep. Um, so as far as I've seen it hasn't affected its growth or eating or anything like that. It's been doing really really well for us. It's just a, a genetic anomaly that happened in incubation is what I would guess. And if, even if it wasn't incubation, I mean, it could have just been yeah, it just, a coding malfunction in yeah, animals. Just, just have like, a really bad, one of the bad yeah. batches. Um, a bad batch. But yes, as you can see, it's not something that would have, they had something like some people leave, you know, mm -hmm. you see rescues all the time with harnesses stuck around them and things like that. That's obviously not the case here because it's only got 11 of the, of the cones, whatever you want to call them, scoots. Um, whereas the babies we have here are 13. Now, with an animal like this, if it's eating fine, it's pooping fine, it's doing everything fine, it doesn't appear to be in any pain or slowed down or anything, uh, this makes a great pet. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But it, she definitely has no shortage of appetite. She will yeah. power through food like no other. But we have no intention of breeding her. No. Right? No. So anytime you have an animal like this, even if you think you know what it comes from, if it's this major of a deformity, because I would class this as pretty major. You know, I mean, that's a pretty large deformity to be missing parts of the shell. You shouldn't, you should not breed it. Doesn't Speaking mean of appetite. Gonna bite your shoe? <laughs> Try and eat my shoe. So they <laughs> like fruits and vegetables and things like that. So when they see something brightly colored, I think there's a little bit of red on your shoes. Yeah, probably uh, strawberry. Or uh, a contrasting color. They're gonna test it a lot of times. Like, oh, can I eat that? I'm gonna check. And they'll reach out there. So you don't want to wear red shoes around them. A lot like babies <laughs> when they just put everything in their mouth to try and figure out what it is. But they don't outgrow it. They just keep doing it no, for the next do, 75, 80 years. Yeah, it's worse when he gets going. Oh, yeah. I've had him try to bite my shoes yeah, before. It's, it's not, not a lot of fun. fun. So anything else on tortoises that you could think? There's also a few other species here we don't have. Leopard, star, mm -hmm. uh, Indian star tortoise. I think and they're beautiful. They're really There's awesome. a lot out there. Wood, 
I think there's a wood turtle. Yep. Was, yeah, the, like and the, there's a mountain tortoise as well, uh, or Asian forest tortoise, whichever you want to call it. They're pretty cool. They look a lot like Aldabras. They're like a, we, I call them poor man's Aldabras because they don't get as big. They look like Aldabras and they have that nice tropical, tropical kind of environment. So they're pretty awesome. And then the Russians too. And the Russians. Russians are a pretty good one. Um, but they're they not, stay small. They're not really Russians. No, they're from Pakistan. They're Pakistani Russians. Yeah. Uh, kind of neat how that name came about. I learned this from Caleb, actually. They came about from a war, correct? Yeah, so when, and I don't remember what year Caleb. this happened, but when they were, when a lot of Russian military were in Pakistan, they brought the, a lot of them home as pets. <laughs> and, um, I'm just going to try and take out our ladder. Yeah. A lot of them brought home as pets, and so they just kind of deemed them the, the Russian tortoise. So I get a lot yeah. of questions in the shop, like, oh, how can that be so hot if it's from Russia? And it's, yeah, like your question, like, this guy doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Yeah, I get so this lot. thing from Russia needs to be hot? Well, yeah, because it's Pakistani. Yeah. So Pakistani Russian tortoise. But it's kind of funny how those names come about from now. I always think that's kind of interesting. All right, anything else you want to add about uh, tortoises? The only other thing that I think is really cool about the Aldabras is a lot of people think turtles are aquatic and tortoises are land. But the Aldabra tortoise has actually been found swimming because they are native to an island chain, kind of not necessarily like Hawaii, but similar to Hawaii. They actually will swim from the each island. Huh. Like, so even though they, they're going to get really big, they're apparently incredibly buoyant. He's not very smart, though. He's stuck in a corner right now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. He's just stuck there. <laughs> we'll have to go get him out. Sometimes so I wonder right. how they've survived all these years. And uh, currently, the oldest tortoise on record is Jonathan. He is an Aldabras tortoise. He's 197 last I checked, which was like a couple years ago. So probably somewhere 199. But he is still alive. See, Kurt always jokes he wants to, well, I think he's joking. I don't know if Kurt's Kurt is joking. But he wants to live to be 120, so that tortoise can still whip his ass. Yeah. Uh, anything you want to add, Kurt? No. Nope. All right, guys, that's all we got on tortoises. We're going to go over to Patreon and talk about how some of these Hermans, you can get them and how to do that if you want. All right, guys, we'll see you next time.